guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is lesson 7.2. We're looking at two variable linear systems. We've got three objectives. We're going to use elimination to solve systems of linear equations. We're going to interpret solutions graphically. And we're going to use systems of linear equations to model and solve real life problems. When we do elimination, it's going to be just like the name sounds, we're going to eliminate one of our variables. And in order to do that, we want to have opposite coefficients on our variable. So if we look at this system of equations, on our y, the top one has a plus 2y, the bottom one has a minus 2y. Those things are opposites, so when we add these two equations together, well, if we add up the x's, we get 8x. This plus 2y and this minus 2y cancel each other out. We just eliminated that y variable, and on the right-hand side, we get 12. Now, if we divide both sides by 8, we get an x value of 3 halves with a little bit of reducing. Now, we're not quite done because we do need to find our y value, so we're going to pick one of those equations. I'm going to work with the top one, so we have 3 times 3 halves as our x value plus 2y equals 4. If we take 3 times 3 halves, well that's 9 halves, just multiplying those two fractions together, plus 2y equals 4. If we subtract the 9 halves over to the other side, 9 halves is really the same as 4.5, so 4 minus 4.5, we get 2y equals negative 1 half. And then last thing is to divide both sides by 2. So we end up with y equals negative 1 fourth. So the ordered pair would be 3 halves and negative 1 fourth as our answer. Taking a look at this one, we've got 5x plus 3y equals 9 and 2x minus 4y equals 14. If we look at these equations right now, they don't have any variables that have opposite coefficients on them. So we're going to have to make some changes in our equation. And in order to get one of those variables to cancel out, we'll have to do a little bit of multiplying. Now, I'm going to focus on these y variables because I already see that one is positive and one is negative. But now we need to get the same number in front of them. So we're looking for like a least common multiple type idea. So I'm going to take this top equation times 4, and I'll take our bottom equation times 3. That'll give us a 12 in front of the y. One of them will be positive, one of them will be negative. So we'll get those things to cancel out. If we distribute the 4 through the top equation, we get 20x plus 12y equals 36. And if we distribute the 3 through the bottom equation, we get 6x minus 12y equals 42. And then adding these equations together, 20x and 6x is 26x. Positive 12y, negative 12y cancel each other out. And if we add up the right-hand side, we get 78. Last step is to divide by our 26. And when we do that, we should get an x value of 3. Now again, we're not quite done because we need to figure out our y value. So we just pick one of our equations, plug in this x value. I'm just going to go with that top equation. So 5 times 3 plus 3y equals 9. Well, 5 times 3 is 15 plus 3y equals 9. If we subtract the 15 over, we get 3y equals negative 6, and divide by the 3, we get a y value of negative 2. So our ordered pair is 3, negative 2. We are going to check this one on our calculator by graphing it out. If we were to rewrite that top equation, it would end up saying y equals negative 5 thirds x plus 3. If we rewrite the bottom equation, we get y equals 1 half x minus 7 halves. If we graph this out, we get a picture that looks something like this. Now again, we're going to look for the intersection point. So I'm going to go second calc. Intersection point is number 5. So we want to make sure that we are on our top curve. So I'm looking at this one. I'm on the blue line. Hit enter. Bottom curve. I'm on the red line. Hit enter a couple of times. And it tells me the intersection is happening at 3, negative 2, which matches the answer that we just found. Now when we check our answers graphically, there are a few different cases that we could run into, and we're going to take a look at each one of those. The first case is where there's exactly one solution, so we're going to solve this system using elimination, check it graphically to see what happens. So right now I'm looking at those y's, they each have a 3 in front of them, they're not opposites, so I'm going to take this top equation times negative 1. If we do that, we get 2x minus 3y equals negative 6, and then we can add these two equations together, so x plus 2x is 3x. Our y's cancel out equals 9, divide by 3, and we get an x value of 3. Now if we plug that answer back into one of our equations, I'm going to use the second equation. So we get 3 plus 3y equals 15. Subtract the 3 over, 
we end up with 3y equals 12, divide by 3, and we get y equals 4, so that's the point 3, 4. Okay, now we're going to look at this one graphically to see what happens. If we rewrite our top equation in y equals form, we get 2 thirds x plus 2. Rewriting that second equation, we get negative 1 third x plus 5. Graphing this one out, we can see that our lines are crossing at one point. So if we go second calc, intersect, first curve, second curve, and that intersection point happens at 3, 4, matches that answer. So if we have exactly one solution, that means there's one intersection point between our two lines. Case 2 has infinitely many solutions. So again, we'll go elimination and then check it graphically. If we take a look at our equations, we don't have any things that are matching up. I'm going to take this top equation times negative 3. If we distribute that, then we get 6x minus 9y equals negative 18. And then if we add these things together, well, those x's cancel out, the y's cancel out, and the 18's cancel out. So really, we get 0 equals 0. And that's how we know that we're dealing with an infinitely many solutions case. Now let's look at what that looks like graphically. When we rewrite each equation, we get 2 thirds x plus 2. So we should notice something going on here. Both of those equations are matching up. If we graph that out, we can see that those lines end up landing on top of each other, which means that every point along these lines is a solution to this system. It's not just enough to say that there are an infinite amount of solutions, though. There's more work that we need to do. If we're dealing with an infinitely many solutions cases, our answers need to look a certain way. So here's how we're going to figure out what those look like. We're going to let x equal some a value, and a just stands for any number. Whatever that a value is, is going to affect what our y values are going to look like. Now, I'm going to use one of those equations that we graphed out where it was y equals 2 thirds x plus 2, and I'm going to take this a value and plug it in for our x. When we do that, we get y equals 2 thirds a plus 2. So dealing with this x value of a gives us a specific looking y value. So if we were to write that out as an ordered pair, our x value is whatever this a thing is, and then our y value would be 2 thirds times that a number plus 2. Third case is going to be a no solution case. So again, we'll go elimination and then graph it. I'm looking at these x's. We've got negative 2 and 4. In order to get things to cancel out, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2. So we get negative 4x plus 6y equals 12. And when we add these together, the x's cancel, the y's cancel. So we get 0 on the left-hand side. But on the right-hand side, those things don't cancel out we get 9. So 0 equals 9. Now that should throw red flags up all over the place. We know something weird is happening with this one. So let's look at it graphically. If we rearrange the top equation, we get 2 thirds x plus 2. Rearranging the bottom one, we get 2 thirds x plus a half. Now graphing these out, we can see that our lines are parallel, meaning that they're never going to cross. So that's why we're getting no solutions. These lines never intersect. Taking a look at our next example, there's a whole bunch of decimals happening here. We've got 0.3x plus 0.4y equals 7.5, and other one we've got 0.02x plus 0.06y equals 0.9. I don't like looking at these decimals, so I'm going to do some multiplication to fix that. Now on top, all of these are decimals to the tenths place, so I'm going to multiply everything by 10. Then we get 3x plus 4y equals 75. In this bottom one, we've got decimals that go out to the hundredths, so I'm going to multiply by 100. So then we get 2x plus 6y equals 90. Now, right now, we don't have anything canceling out, so we're going to have to do a little bit more multiplication. And I'm going to focus on those x's. We've got 2 and 3, so I'm thinking we're working towards 6. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 2, and I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 3. Distributing the negative 2 on top, we get negative 6x minus 8y equals negative 150. Distributing the 3 on bottom, we get 6x plus 18y equals 270. And then adding these up, those 6x's cancel out. We get 10y equals 120. So we end up with a y value of 12. Now we still need to find our x value, so we're going to take this y value and plug it back in. And I think it would be helpful to use one of these equations that doesn't have any decimals in it. I'm just going to use the top equation. So 3x plus 4 times 12 equals 75. 
Well, 4 times 12 is 48, so we get 3x plus 48 equals 75. Subtracting the 48 over, we get 3x equals 27. And then dividing by 3, we get an x value of 9. So that would be the ordered pair 9, 12. We got just one point, so this would be our one solution case. Last example is a little bit of an application problem. We're talking about supply and demand of some new type of technology. Supply and demand are driven by the price of an object. So we've got two different equations. The first one is our demand equation. The second one is our supply equation. P is going to represent the price, and X is going to represent the number of units. And we're looking for an equilibrium point. We're looking for where these two lines or equations match up. So we're going to use elimination to help us out on this one. I see that these decimals are very close to each other, and they're even opposites. In order to get this to work out, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2. So then we get 2p equals 300 minus 0.00002x. And then our bottom equation is going to stay the same. p equals 60 plus 0.00002x. Then if we add these up, those decimal x's are going to cancel out. We get 3p equals 360, dividing both sides by 3 we get a p-value or a price of 120. We still want to find that x-value, so we need to take that 120 and plug it back into one of our equations. I'm going to use the second equation. So we get 120 equals 60 plus 0.00002x. Subtracting the 60 over to the left-hand side, we get 60 equals 0.00002x. And then the last thing we need to do is divide by that big long decimal, 0 0.00002. And when we do that, we get an x value of 3 million. At a price of $120, we're going to sell 3 million units. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.